Hi, my name's Sarah Anderson and it's my turn today to share with you on the Bible Art Journaling UK YouTube channel. Something I've never done before, so please bear with me. Um, I love to play with art materials, craft materials. Um, I'm very much um, a stamper, a spoofer about with ink, paint, stencils, I love to stitch. And I like my Bible to reflect that as well. So the hardest thing about today was actually, or one of the hardest things, was actually choosing what to what to do in my Bible. But what's really been speaking to me this week is the authority that Jesus had and that people recognised when he was um, on earth. I'm catching up with my reading plan in the back of the Passion Translation. I got a bit behind, so I was reading the few chapters of Luke all together rather than just in little bits every day. And what really struck me was the number of times this authority is mentioned across a few of the chapters. So the Roman uh, centurion recognised it um, to the extent that he said, Jesus, you don't even need to come to the person that needs healing, you can just speak. Um, in Luke 8, Jesus rebukes the howling wind and the, and the uh, surging waves and the disciples ask, who is this man? Who Who is this man who has this authority? Because to all intents and purposes, he came across um, he was a man, uh, but he, he, could, he had this authority that he could do all sorts of things. In Luke 10, in the Passion, it says, Your names are written in the journals of heaven, he was talking about his followers, and you belong to God's kingdom. This is the true source of your authority. And what's been also been going through my head this week is that song majesty and kingdom authority. And I'd just like to ponder on it more because I don't think I really get it. My Bible has a, as I said before, it. I'm, I'm happy to say it does reflect who I am from a kind of arty, splashy, colouring point of view person. But my um, most used resource is probably this fine big pen, which I keep in my Bible with. A little pen tab so it's always there because one of the other things I do love is lettering and I love the texture that the fine bit pen gives you on this thin crinkly paper and, and you can add other things to it I've lost my paper and I want to make that word authority in my bible really stand out um, in a way that's quite ordinary um because jesus came to earth as an as an ordinary man combined with god if that's the right way to put it so i'm going to journal it in luke 8 9 because this is the section where jesus calms the storm and i might well put some stamping or some pictures in that side uh, the talking about authority goes through a few pages so i'm going to put it over here I might well add colour to it afterwards, um, we'll see. So I'm turning it round, I'm going to get a pencil and just write the word authority in quite loopy writing. I've got all sorts in this Bible so I'm just going to put a pad of paper underneath to make it a flatter surface to write on. And all I'm going to do, sit down, is write authority uh, in kind of relaxed loopy handwriting like that I hope I spelt it correctly and then I'm just going to go round it with my black pen I kind of just wanted to share as well how you don't need lots of expensive supplies to do your art journaling You can use whatever it is that, that you like to use to add colour or notes or lettering to your pages. Because it's actually about spending time with what you've read and bringing it to life in a way that it means you'll remember it. So all I'm doing is going round-ish the pencil 
lines that I made earlier. Never been able to join my R's up. I'm kind of making the joins a little bit thinner than the actual letters because I just think it looks better. And this Y is something I picked up on Instagram I think with this lovely loop well I like it I'm not sure where I'm up to there yeah something about that way I really like so all I've done is I've written it in pencil and then I've gone round it with my black pen and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just give that um, a bit more solid I'm going to solidify it a little bit I could just make a thicker line all the way around what I'm going to do is make it look a bit more 3d like um, when you're doing this you can imagine like there's light coming from this side which means such and such but I find it easier to remember to just make it a bit darker on this to the left I mean you can choose which section you do it on but um if this was cut out and was standing and there was a light over there it would be casting a shadow here and and underneath so that's what i'm just gonna shade in and go around my uh, single lines again a bit darker And it's spending time doing this kind of lettering, for me, just means that if I'm on my own just working on it, I'm meditating on that word, thinking about what it means, pondering it. And it also means it stands out in the Bible.
There we go. Authority. Hopefully this video joins together because I just had to have a think then about what I was going to do next. And I think what I'm going to do is just add a bit more around here just to say the authority of Jesus over the things that are mentioned here. Um, and as children of God, um, we, because of Jesus, we have that same authority as well, which is what I'd like to ponder. And I'm sure there's more to study through through the letters um, later in the Bible. So what I'm going to do is just add in... Um, the let's go right that what I like to do is add a bit of variety to my lettering so I might just do very simple slightly spaced out letters the authority of And Jesus, I'm going to do in capitals. I'm going to do the, whatever these bits, the letters are called, they will have a name higher than normal. So where you would normally have that bit across the middle, I'm doing anything that would sit on that middle line um, a bit higher. So I'm going to do the same with my S. It's going to change there, come right down. I suppose they're quite elongated as well, these letters, it looks like they've been stretched. I'm just going to emphasise them a bit. The thing about lettering is, is practice, really. People say I have a really nice handwriting. I spent the gap between what was then fifth year and lower sixth um, writing pages and pages of letters sitting in the library because um, I hated my handwriting. And really, if you, you look at any books about improving handwriting, it's just practice, practice, practice. So the authority of Jesus. In fact, I'm going to leave it at that because I will do at some point the other side over the here, the wind and the waves, etc, etc. But what I am going to do is add some a hint of gold, I think. So to do that, I've drawn a piece of paper in half and I'm going to just... Right down there. This is a uh, deco art metallic craft paint. Any gold acrylic paint will work. This has got quite a nice shimmer to it. It's just I bought this in Hobbycraft um, a while ago. There will be something similar still, I'm sure. And I'm just going to paint over the edge. leave that to dry naturally or I can use my heat gun and this is a heat heat gun not a hairdryer craft heat tool and what what I quite like about this is it because you're drying you're kind of intensifying the heat to dry it it makes your page a little bit crinkly as well and if I wanted to I could have played, put the paint on really thickly Right, let's see if I can show you. And the binder in the paint, the thing that binds the pigment to whatever it goes to, um, sometimes will bubble if you heat it with a heat tool. But like I say, you could do this technique just with just letting it dry. Well, you won't get bubbles then, but. The 
see. See that there? I'll move it up in a minute to show you. Please, if you're doing this at home, use a well ventilated room because the paint does give up. smell so I don't know how good that is for you but can you see that bit of texture on there like that could also have embossing powder to do that but we're trying to keep it simple <laughs> so keep it like that as you can see I'm a bit of a messy crafter so I end up with little bits of paint all over bits of paint on the back of here and what I'll do sometimes is make that look a bit more like it was supposed to be there Add in some more splodges. The other thing I want to do is add a crown um, somewhere buried under here. There we go. I've got I've got punch. Punch is out. A crown shape. If you turn your punch over, you can see where you're punching. So it makes this particularly nice little punch. I want a gold one, so what I'm going to do is get a piece of tissue paper. Now you could use deli paper. I'm a big lover of deli paper. It's just got a bit more um, strength to it, deli paper. But this is normal tissue paper. I'm just going to a green spot. Paint there. Acrylic paint. Ooh. So I've got a piece of gold paper. Now, in true blue piece of fashion, I'm going to put that down and show you the bit I made earlier and dried. Uh, and what I want to do is punch, punch a crown out of here. Now, if I just put the tissue paper in, it's just going to mangle it because it's a bit too thin really unless I guess you're a very sharp um, punch so what I'm going to do is just put a piece of copy paper underneath lay the tissue paper over the top and show it crown There we go. A little gold crown. Which might stick somewhere around here. I just need a glue stick to do that with. I want to go I like that and that um gold crown I could punch a few out and that could be my motif wherever I talk about this authority so um, I'll probably put one when I do this page as well. But for now, all that remains is to put um, the date at the bottom. I'm going to put the 4th, because I did it yesterday. Yeah, 4th and 3rd, 18. And I'm also going to add, decided, um, one of the notes I'd written in my book, in my notebook. Lord Supreme. Over heaven and earth. Mm. 